What is going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan, and welcome to part three of the interview prep series. So if you're trying to figure out, you know, a coding test or what an interview process is going to kind of look like for a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer or an SRE, this is going to be the series for you. And again, this is part three where we're going to be spinning up a Kubernetes cluster to host a container from part two. So let's go ahead and jump right into the code and spin up this AKS cluster. Okay, so I have the code here and it's actually pretty straightforward. Now, the interview prep that I was doing, uh, well, the interview that I was going through uh, for a consultancy, they were essentially like, okay, build it however you wanna build it. So if this is just like a development environment, this is kind of fine just to use the Azure Clive because you're only spinning it up once. Now, if this was something that you'd have to spin up like multiple times, uh, you probably wanna use something like Terraform. So what we're doing here is we're using, oops, sorry, let me go back here. We're using AZ AKS and then the create command. So it's going to create a Kubernetes cluster for us. So we're going to pass in a resource group. We're going to pass in a name and then we're going to pass in a Kubernetes version. So you may be wondering, well, we have these variables here. So, you know, what does this mean? How are we passing these in? Well, we're actually going to fully create the AKS cluster in GitHub Actions. So that's why that you see these variables here. We don't have to worry about those right now. You're going to see those in GitHub Actions. So I do want to quickly go over here the deployment and the service. Now, we're going to be using the deployment and the service in part four of this. This is part three. But I just want to quickly go over this. So what we're doing here, again, for a dev environment, we're doing a deployment. We're using the GoWeb API as a metadata name. We're going to have one replica. And then the container itself is going to pull from the interview prep Docker registry or the Azure container registry that we created. And then we're going to open it up on port 8080. Then we have the service here and the service is just going to do a type load balancer. So that way we're able to hit our application from a URL. So with that, let's head over to GitHub Actions and we'll see this thing in action. I'm at GitHub here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a GitHub Action for our PS1, which is to create the AKS cluster. Now, the one thing that I do wanna show really quick is if I open up a new tab and I go to settings, then I scroll down to secrets, you're gonna see here that I have a secret. And if you wanna create one, you can just create a new repository secret. This is because we need a way to authenticate to Azure using AZ login. So if you want to create an RBAC rule for this, you could just use this command right here, run it in a terminal, and it's gonna spit out a JSON for you that you can just copy and paste as is into a secret right here. So going back, I'm gonna to go to actions and I'm gonna click on set up a workflow yourself. So as you can see here, this is just a starter workflow and really what it's doing is it's just echoing out hello world. So we wanna delete everything from lines 25 down okay and then we're going to keep everything else so what's going to happen here is on means that the action will run if there's a push or a pull request from the main branch and then we have a workflow dispatch that allows us to run this workflow manually from the actions tab if we want to and then we have the job that we're going to be using the build which is going to be the deployment process for our aks cluster and then runs on. So what it runs on is it's a GitHub runner that's essentially just a container or a virtual environment in the background. And we're going to be running it on Ubuntu latest. You can also use Windows latest. You can run things on Mac OS, stuff like that. But Ubuntu latest, the default is typically a good way to go. So from the marketplace, I'm going to search Azure Cli. And we're going to see the two actions that we're going to use, the Azure Cli action and the Azure login. So I'm going to click Azure login. I'm going to copy this and I am literally just going to paste it like so. And then I'm just going to tab this in here. Okay. So as you can see, it's using the Azure login task and then creds. So as you can see here, you can just, you know, paste the output of the cred or you can use, you know, a secret variable, which is exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to do dollar sign bracket bracket. And then I'm going to type secrets dot Azure credential because Azure credential is the name of the secret. And then I'm literally going to delete all of this because that's the only thing that we need here. Next, I'm going to go back to the search results and I'm going to look at the Azure Cli action. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Okay. Then we're going to scroll down. 
again I'm gonna paste this in like so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tab this over okay and then what we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using an inline script so I'm gonna go back to interview prep here I'm gonna go right here I'm gonna go to AZ AKS I'm gonna copy this go back to new file and I'm gonna paste this in and then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete AZ Cli version we don't need that parameter so we have these environment variables here resource group Kubernetes version. However, these aren't actual environment variables for a GitHub action. So I'm going to go right back up here by name and I'm going to go to ENV like so. I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some environment variables. So the first thing is going to be resource group, resource group, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put this into a resource group that I already have available inside of Azure. So I'll say, for example, AZ400. It's one of my resource groups. And then Kubernetes version. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to type in Kubernetes version. Let me just make sure that was a lowercase k. Yep. Okay. And then we could put a version here for Kubernetes. And I'll use the newest that's available in AKS at the time of recording this. So it's going to be 1.19. Six. Okay, so then what we have to do is moving down here for reason. Oh, we actually have to add a new one for name really quick. So let's do name and then we'll do interview prep AKS 92. Right, so now we'll come down here and we got to change these variables a little bit. So we got to do dollar sign bracket bracket and then we'll type in ENV resource group. Okay, and then we'll type in bracket bracket env name. And then we'll go right here and we'll do bracket env dot Kubernetes version and we'll add our brackets in at the bottom here. So with that, let's go ahead and commit this and deploy it. So I'm going to click start commit. I'm going to commit new file. And now if we go to actions, we can see here that there's a new action already queued up for us. Why? Because remember, anytime that we push to this repository, the action is going to kick off. So let's go ahead and just wait for this build process to complete. And I actually found a bug in the code. So if I scroll down here, I put Azure credential as a secret. It should be Azure credentials. Oopsies. So let's start commit. And then we'll go back here, we'll go to our actions, and then we'll see the second action now running with the update. We'll go to build, and then we'll wait for this to finish. And as we can see, our AKS cluster was successfully created. So in part four, we'll now be able to deploy our containerized Go app to our Kubernetes cluster. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.